YouTube, what's going on, man? We are back with another video review. This is gonna be of the Falcor Rock chassis. Uh, as you can see, I have a uh, special guest. I don't know if you guys can see him in the frame or not, but I do have a special guest with me. And his name is Arlo. Now, this chassis is something that I think is, it is a newer chassis, but it is one that doesn't have a lot of market share, honestly, right now. And it's something that I do want to inform you guys about because I think it's a really competitive option in the current market space of chassis. And we'll get into that in just a second. But first, I bring you my thought-provoking question. So if you saw the last video review, it's a little segment I wanna do where I ask you a thought-provoking question and here's one for you. If Apple made a car, would it have windows? Let me know your answer in the comments down below. Per usual, we will start in the rear and in the front. And I would like to make a note that, first of all, I don't think a lot of people are even aware that Falcor makes a PRS race gun style chassis. But I do think that this is a competitive option for a lot of people if you want something a little bit different. And I do think that it offers some unique features that no other chassis offers that are actually pretty cool and useful. I will also make the disclaimer, as I normally do, that I have used this chassis uh, both in local level and national level matches, including the uh, heartbreaking NRL finale, the last one ever that I did shoot this chassis in. Uh, so I will roll in some some B-roll footage of, of all that uh, as you're watching this review. And so I feel pretty confident in things that I'm able to point out about this chassis for you guys. So without further ado, let's start back here in the rear. First thing you might notice is this giant folding adapter. This is an MDT folding adapter, all right? Falcor does not make their own, but you can use any AR-15 style folding adapter. So you guys know I'm partial to folders, not only for cleaning, but for traveling, especially a lot of air travel. I just like a smaller Pelican to roll around. When it's like this, it locks up really nice, but the one that I got, there is no retention on the side, so it just kind of flops around, but that's okay because the only time I ever fold it again is when I'm gonna clean it or when it's already in the Pelican for travel, so it doesn't really matter. Here, there's two set screws that you will loosen up and then adjust the height. And then you do have a little bit of cant. There's a set screw here on this side that you will loosen and you can cant it a little bit as well. Here on either side, you've got your QD uh, mounts for a sling as well as over here, you've got QD mounts for a sling. The entire bottom piece, if you notice, is on this like Picatinny rail section on the extension here. Uh, held in by, there's two screws on each side. So there's screw here, screw here, and then on the opposite side, there's also screws, and they just clamp in on a Picatinny rail. I like that in the sense that it's very secure once it's on. What I don't like is that it's not quick adjust. Now, a lot for a lot of you guys, the length of pull is a set it and forget it feature, and that's great, but for somebody like me who, uh, I'm always letting people try my gear at the range, and. Uh, my buddies try, you know, different chassis and stuff like that. It does get a little bit cumbersome to have to continue to undo set screws every time. But if you're one of those people that nobody ever shoots your gun except you, that shouldn't be an issue. And again, it's super secure. There's not going to be any inadvertent sliding around because it is on a pick rail. This rear weight here is probably uh, a little over a pound, if I recall correctly. Okay. Otherwise, there's just a big gap in here. So depending if you need a rear weight or not, or how heavy you want to make your rifle, this is an extra accessory that does not come with the chassis, but it is available there and it is a significant rear weight. You have the bag rider down here. This seems to be like a 3D printed bag rider. I do like that it's angled a little bit, as you can see down here. What I don't like is, and, and I understand everybody wants people to use their own accessories, right? But the connection method is just two screws. Now, yes, you can probably just reverse engineer it and 3D print your own bag rider, but I do like the butt stocks that do like an M lock on the bottom so that I can use different bag riders or if I have a particular preference to a bag rider, I can do that instead. Uh, but I mean, it, it works well and it's got a nice angle, which I am partial to angled bag riders. So I, I do appreciate that. If you guys have seen any pictures, I actually reversed the cheek piece on mine so that I get more of this in the front, if that makes sense, because you can slide the cheek piece fore and aft here by loosening a thumb wheel. I'm going to flip this over and show you guys the other side and show you another one of my dislikes, but you can slide it fore and aft this way 
but when the way that it comes is this short end is in the front and I wanted this longer end in the front so I just took it out because it's sitting on two posts I just took it out and flipped it so I have a little even more adjustability on where I want my cheek piece uh, because at one point I did have a uh, cantilever style mount uh, with a scope on it on this rifle so I needed a little more forward for that now let me show you one of my bigger dislikes and I hope in a maybe gen 2 or even a gen 1.5 because it's not really that big of a modification I don't think like I think it would be pretty easy for them to make is here so let me flip this around and when you look right here so this is the thumb wheel here that I loosen to go fore and aft, right? But if you look really closely next to it, you'll see two small holes, right? One on either side. Now, inside those small holes are small set screws that hold the height adjustment for the cheek piece. What I don't like is that basically these set screws are easy to strip. One of them in here is already pretty much stripped out. And I don't like that. I wish that they were thumb wheels and make this one maybe a little bit smaller instead of this big, big knob. Although I think you could still probably fit two smaller thumb wheel screws in here. But if you made all three of these uh, thumb wheels, I think that would be a lot better than set screws. Because once again, and it's definitely a different size than what you have for the length of pull over here. So essentially to adjust this, if I need to adjust uh, cheek piece height and length of pull. I got to have a uh, bit size for here and for in here. And again, these are very small and apparently somewhat delicate. I, I don't like monkey wrench anything typically, but somehow it was, it, you know, a, a couple times of adjusting my height and it, it yeah, not great. So I, I don't particularly like that. Again, I think it's an easy design fix, but just something that I want you guys to be aware of in case of you guys do uh, decide to try out this chassis. All right, let's move on to the center section of the chassis. Now, uh, you may notice these holes here on the side. That is for a thumb shelf. I do have one on the right side. I do not have one on the left, but these are an accessory that you can purchase from Falcor. I will show a close-up of how it works, but essentially you can rotate it for height and cant, so that's really nice to get whatever personal preference feel you have on where you want your thumb shelf, if it's a little bit higher, flatter, etc. On the top, you do have a bubble level, which you see in a lot of other popular chassis, such as MPAs, XLRs, and you can see it from behind the rifle. It's not hidden anywhere or anything. It's nice and bright and uh, green. So I do like having a backup, essentially, bubble level on my rifle or chassis, as I do keep one on my scope. You'll see the grip here is an AR-15 style grip. This is an ergo zero degree grip, so just a straight grip. This is not the grip that comes with the chassis. If you guys have seen any pictures of a Falcor chassis, you will have seen the grip. It looks a little bit different. And I'll do a close-up of it. I gotta go dig it out of the box. I actually don't like the Falcor grip for a few reasons. One, I don't have gorilla-sized hands, so it was a bit too wide for me. It's made of a similar uh, 3D material to what the bag rider was made out of and i think they got the adjustment wrong so it is an adjustable grip but essentially what happens is there's a set screw in the front and it allows the front half so essentially imagine cutting this grip in half and the front half to move out or back right essentially in theory to give you the proper trigger uh, trigger finger to trigger shoe distance that you need to maintain a 90 degree angle, right? Well, we've seen adjustable uh, grips before, MDT being one of, if not the first that I can remember. But what they did was they had the shaft of the grip and you could move the entire grip forward and backward, not just the front half. Because my thing is, is that if you've got really small hands, if the grip itself is not close enough and you're already reaching like this moving the front of it is just going to move your front fingers out more like it's not going to make it any easier to get your hand closer to, to a 90 degree if it's already too far so I, I it i don't know it didn't make any sense to me and maybe somebody can chime in on how it does 
but I tried it a bunch of different ways and the adjustment just never made any type of sense to me. You do have a giant cutout here, uh, which is actually like a little Easter egg, which I think was kind of cool, but it is so that you can stick Allen keys up here so that you can adjust your trigger pull weight if you need to adjust that or adjust your trigger in any way if, if it is adjustable from the bottom up. And I don't know if you guys can really see, so I may do another zoom in, but it is cut out in the shape of the state of Montana, which is where Falcor is located. So nice little Easter egg there. Uh, you will see that this is an ambidextrous chassis. So that's also nice for all the lefties out there. You don't have to wait for a left-handed version or anything like that. It does come with a plug that, that you can slide in right here to plug whatever side is obviously not going to be used but it is ambidextrous from the factory. So there's only one, there's no right and left. It's just an ambi cut, which I do appreciate. This is a height adjustable mag latch. And I do think the system is really nice. It is a little tedious and it's similar to the uh, J Allen system where you do need two Allen keys, but I do think that it is nice. And I can roll some extra footage of me showing you, but essentially what you're going to do is you're going to pull it forward. And in one of these holes, is going to be a release set screw that you're going to stick the Allen key in, back it out until it releases the adjustment screw. And what will happen is once you have that uh, release screw out far enough and it will hold the latch in the vertical position like such, and then there is another screw that you can then turn that from the bottom here that you turn and it actually adjusts the height up and down. So a little bit tedious, but it's a very secure and solid design, so I like it. Moving back up here, you'll see this kind of triangular-ish top cutout here with an M-lock slot. That is actually, for the first that I've ever seen, center section weight. So you can put weights, uh, one on each side of this center section here, just to give you a little more weight on the rifle, but it's right in the center, so it won't really affect the balance too much one way or the other. And then on top of that, you can also put your two-round holder if you have an M-Lock one here, or you can put the weights here and then a two-round holder on top of the weights. The weights do have a little slot, or you can just do the Velcro short-action precision style, whatever, whatever you guys like. I do not have the center weights here. I didn't personally need them or felt like I needed them, but... If you guys want to just tack on as much weight as possible, then that is an option. You do have a pretty generous uh, barricade stop here at the front of the magwell, and it is ribbed, so it does give you a little bit of um, traction up against the bag, which I like. And I think that's pretty much all the details of this center section that I want to cover. So let's move on to the forend. So first of all, I think it looks good. I, I think it does have like a sexy look to it. Uh, some people say it looks like a spear on, on the end. In any event, I like it. Some people don't, that's fine. But what I do think is interesting, and unfortunately it's covered up by these M-lock weights, but you, you can see it here, is so there's a shorter night vision bridge that would measure this long, I guess, right here. And the question is, well, why is there a shorter one if the end is right here? It's not so that, I mean, I guess you could run it way up here. That'd look weird, though. But what they offer is a nose extension, which is right here. So from the end of this M-lock weight here to the end of it, that is basically a three-inch extension that takes this very long forend to a total of like 19 or 19 and a half inches from your 16 inch. This is the nose piece that comes when you order the rifle with no nose extension. So it would just fit on and right here would be essentially the tip of your rifle right here. And essentially the way that it works is it's got four pins that go into the chassis frame. And then there is this, which is not only serves as a weight, but also basically a bar extension that uh, bolts to the nose and then bolts on the bottom. And that's what holds the extension on. So you not only have a weight in there for all you people that like internal forend weights, but it's also the connector bar, if you will, that secures in these four pins. So these four alignment pins, I mean, there's no play or wiggle in it whatsoever. So I really like that. Now, 
the extension is separate, so you do have to order that separately. But I really like it because it gives you a really long foreign, so you can get your bipod out there, um, way out there for prone stages. Or if you guys have ever shot some matches where I know it's a very niche type of situation, but there are some advantages. Like if you ever have to shoot a stage where you're shooting from the center of the tank trap to the prone, then back to the center of the tank trap to the prone and back and forth like that all on one stage, like two shots up, two shots down type of stage, which I have seen. And you want to leave your bipod down because it's so far forward. You're not worried about your bipod leg hitting one of the tank trap legs, as you've seen, if you guys have ever watched uh, some shooters that aren't too good on tank traps or forget to uh, close up their bipod legs, they'll they'll run into some of those issues. So little things like that that can give it an advantage, which I like. It also gives you more real estate up here. If you want to mount even more weights, if you're one of those guys that likes a 30-pound rifle, you can certainly do that because you've got now uh, a few extra M-Lock slots. It also gives you more room to mount other M-Lock accessories, uh, sling uh sling point mounts or or i don't know rails if you want to put like a laser range finder on the side or whatever you guys want to do it just gives you more rail space so i like that and if you look at all the chassis these days that is the current trend make the end longer it's a trend and falcor is giving you the option if you don't like it then don't buy the extension run it at your typical 16 or if you want to run a shorter barrel you know like an 18 19 inch barrel then go ahead and don't use the extension and run it here. It's also a great way for this chassis to become multi-series, if you will. And what I mean by that is if you wanted one chassis that you wanted to run as a race gun at like 25, 30 pounds, and then wanted the same chassis to run in, let's say, NRL Hunter Open Heavy, which is 16 pounds and under, you can lose the extension, run the standard length uh, nose on it, and that'll save you some weight there. And now you have the same chassis with the same thumb shelf, the same grip, the same manual of arms. It feels the same. It's just not as long and a little bit lighter. And you can strip off all the weights and you can get this to under 16 pounds. Now, do you have to be careful about picking your components? Yes, because this isn't exactly a light chassis to begin with, but it's doable. It's certainly doable, especially if you're just going to dabble and you're not truly committed yet, or you're just trying to see if Ah, maybe I want to build a dedicated NRL hunter gun or not. You do have your uh, standard one, two, five barrel channel. So you won't have any issue with a straight taper barrel, which is nice because again, the trend is thicker, heavier, fatter barrels. I also like that, like me personally, I'm trending more towards 28 inch barrels, especially because I don't run suppressed. So having a longer forend way out here is nice just to have the bipod a little bit closer to an even longer barrel now. Falcor also makes their own side weights, but I like, and I can do a separate review on these sawtooth weights, but for some of you guys that are going to ask me, these are weights from Sawtooth Rifles, Dependabilt, which ha I do have their um, side bite system that kind of slides in here. So that's also really nice. I do like that. The Falcor weights are nice and they're heavy, but they were smooth on the edges. So when you try to when you try to do one of these with your thumb and like use it as a thumb shelf, my thumb kept sliding off because they're like angled. So I didn't really like them. I like being able to slap on whatever M-Lock accessory I want, whether that's a two round holder, some different weights from whether it be uh, Dependabilt, Gray Ops, uh, I don't know, even the MDT weights, literally whatever weights I want. All right, guys. So let's talk about the overall, my overall thoughts on this chassis. I'd give it a solid eight out of 10, man. So I think there's only a few small things that I'd like to see changed. One is while it's a very secure design, it's a little bit tedious. So if there was a way to simplify the uh, height adjustable mag latch system here, I'd like that. As I talked about with the adjustable cheek piece here, if we could get those two uh, set screws that allow you to adjust the height, if we could get those to thumb screws, I think that'd be great. And if we could get the length of pull screws, to also be some sort of thumb screw attachment. I, I do like the fact that it's on a Picatinny rail, so it won't slide, so you don't need to change that. But if you could at least make it thumb screws so that I could unscrew them a little bit faster instead of having to get out my whole toolkit to adjust the butt section, I think that'd be great. 
I would like to see Falcor come up with their own folding adapter just so they could push the market a little bit instead of just saying, hey, you know, you can get an XLR MDT or whatever folder you want. I'd like to see them just come out with their own design and see what kind of cool stuff they can come up with because I think that innovation is good for market share and just kind of pushes everybody else, you know, to, okay, let's, let's take it a step further, take it a step further. So I think that could be cool. I do love, again, the forend. I think that that is super innovative to be able to, I, I know there's chassis out there with nose extensions. You know, you've got the XL spigot from KRG. You've got the super long nose extension on the XLR Envies and that kind of stuff. But I do think having like an actual nose piece that also incorporates like, like it's an entire piece. It gives you extra M-lock slots and allows you to run a longer night vision rail. I think all of that is cooler in a sense. And so I like the option of having that because again, you can add weight or take off weight depending on, you know, if your rifle needs to meet a certain weight requirement, depending on the series, or if you just want a lighter rifle for say team matches, steel safari, sniper matches, that kind of stuff. Or if you want a longer forend, if you're like me, that's going to be running longer barrels typically you can get your bipod out just a little bit closer so that's nice for stability the problem i think is market share and market knowledge of this chassis who really knows that falcor is making a remington 700 pattern uh prs style chassis almost nobody this is a very good off the beaten path option if you like to be a little bit different that gives you some truly innovative features and I hope that other companies see this chassis and they can take some inspiration from this chassis and really start to push forward. I haven't covered price point at all in this video because I wanted to save it towards the end so you guys can truly get a feel for this chassis and a look at everything this chassis offers before I tell you how much it costs. The price for this chassis with no nose extension, no night vision rail, obviously no folding adapter, and obviously no weights included. So you're just talking buttstock and your your basic chassis and the grip is $1,500. Now, that may come as a little bit of a sticker shock to some of you guys, and I get that. If you looked at the market share last year or even a couple years ago, $1,500 was really expensive. I mean, almost no chassis cost that much. But if you look at today's market, you're talking about newer chassis that are above that price point. You're talking about the KRG C4, brand new chassis with all the tier one whiz bang features, $1,900, right? Before you option it out with weights and other stuff like that. The Matrix Pro, another great chassis that I will have a review coming for uh, a little bit later on down the line that I'm currently testing, over $1,500. So at $1,500, yes, by the time you put some accessories on it and stuff like that, you're well over that price. But the $1,500 initial price point, I feel is not that out of touch with the current market. And honestly, it's a little bit on the lower end because after that, it's a hard pill to swallow, but you're talking about $1,000 chassis being more of a budget option now, which is kind of crazy to say. Now, I will say that Falcor, if you go to their website and Falcor, if you do watch this, this is meant to be constructive criticism, but their website sucks, man. Honestly, it doesn't show nearly any of the features that this thing truly has and the different ways you can use this. So they need to update that. And that's why I wanted to put out this review uh, as soon as I felt comfortable enough in my conclusions after using this chassis myself, because I wanted to highlight everything that this could do before you think it's just another random ass chassis for 1500 bucks and another company just trying to make a quick buck. Falcor has always made solid products even going to their AR line and things like that. They've always done high quality stuff. They have actions as well. So they're, they're taking a big step into this race gun world. And I'm excited to see a Gen 2 version of this or whatever the next update of their main race gun chassis is. Once again, man, any comments, questions, concerns, and again, overall thoughts on this chassis, leave them in the comment section below. Even if you wanna just stop by and tell me that I suck, you know, that's always welcome too. But regardless, I would definitely appreciate a big thumbs up and please hit that subscribe button as well as some bell notifications so you don't miss any reviews on the way because I do have, <clears throat> hint, hint, cough, cough, some more reviews coming if you like these products above my head as well.
that'll do it for today youtube i appreciate you guys sticking around to the end if you did and if you didn't i still appreciate you guys clicking through to watch and uh i'll see you guys in the next one stay safe stay shooting